You can talk about Frankie de Jong, you can talk about Anthony, Lissandro Martinez, all these important signings that Manchester United could and need to make this summer. But the one most important signing has got nothing to do with the football pitch, nothing to do with the player that we can sign to transform that team. It's all part of the rebuild at the club, which hasn't been completed yet. Now, you'll know before the summer how much I was suggesting the idea of Paul Mitchell coming in and becoming our new transfer chief guru, whatever you want to call him would be amazing. The way this summer has gone so far, it's showed that Manchester United are still missing this piece. And in this video, I want to explain exactly why this really is the missing piece and why Manchester United cannot sustainably go forward and rebuild as a football club without making this appointment. It's that crucial. Make sure you subscribe to United People's TV. By the end of the video, if you do enjoy it, maybe if you do learn something, you can leave a comment in, down below as well. Hit the notification bell as well. But let's get straight into this one. And we know what's happened this summer, right? <clears throat> With everything that we've done in our pursuit of Martinez, of De Jong, of Anthony, of everybody. And John Murto is trying his hardest. But he's trying. He's learning on the job. John Murto has been given a responsibility for a role which he has no real experience in. If we look at the changes that have happened behind the scenes at Manchester United this summer, <clears throat> they've been huge. And we look at the structure here, and there's no doubt that we have made great strides towards improving our previous structure towards what it is now. John Murto there has got so much responsibility with Andy O'Boyle coming in underneath him as his deputy football director. Nick Cox there heading the academy. Justin Cochrane, I think he's leaving the club actually. He might have already left. This has to be updated. Mitchell Van Dijk, look. Lots and lots of progress behind the scenes at Manchester United. <clears throat> but if you look at, you remember these conversations we had before the summer started. I said this could be the dream team at United, the new dream team. Eric Ten Hag, he came, he's here. Ralph Rannick's obviously gone. And Paul Mitchell there, he's left. Oh, no, not left, sorry, he's, he's stayed at Monaco. He's not going anywhere. And that's where the conversations about that man, Michael Edwards, are now coming to fruition. And this is coming off the back of, a, of an exclusive from the Daily Mail uh, from Sammy Mottbell saying that Manchester United and Chelsea are both interested in signing Michael Edwards. Now, I'm sure you know who Michael Edwards is. And Michael Edwards, this story has been corroborated by Fabrizio Romano saying that waiting for Michael Edwards to make his decision on his future. Manchester United also interested in, in Lee Dykes. I might do a separate video on Lee Dykes, but right for this moment, for this particular video, I'm focusing on Michael Edwards. And just the overall position that we need to fill as a transfer guru. Because Michael Edwards, look, there's no doubting what he's done at Liverpool is ridiculous. If you look at the players that he's been involved with, the transfers that have happened under his watch, it's been a, a significant part of Liverpool's ability to rebuild themselves as a football club. Look at the signings they've made there. Robertson, one of the best value signings you're ever likely to see, really. 10 million from Hull. <clears throat> And then the big signings have worked out as well. Alisson, Van Dijk, Salah, all the big ones have worked out. They haven't all worked out. Of course, there's some misses, but the amount of hits are ridiculous. Now, Michael Edwards chose to leave Liverpool this summer. I think presumably he's still working with them this summer, worked on them on the Nunes deal. I don't really know, don't really care. But he's stepping down. Therefore, Manchester United have an opportunity to go in and try and get him. But we won't be the only club doing that. A Samaria Granovskia. Is leaving Chelsea, has left Chelsea actually with Todd Burley, Todd Bowley, Bailey, Bowley, Bowley, Todd Bowley taking over as the new Chelsea owner. The Abramovich era is gone. Bruce Buck has left, and so has Marina Granovskia. So they need someone else to come in and be their next transfer guru. As Mark Ogden from the, the Telegraph, sorry, not Telegraph, ESPN is, saying, is suggesting Chelsea are looking at Edwards too. And why wouldn't they? Now you could come to me and say, Sam, why on earth would we be looking at Liverpool's sloppy seconds? Because Liverpool have set the bar. It does. I, I don't know how many times I've got to explain it. It doesn't get any easier to say. But Liverpool set the bar on how to operate as a football club in the last five, six, seven years. And just because he's leaving Liverpool doesn't mean that he's bad. <laughs> he's not at all. He's just decided to move on. A bit like Mane leaving, leaving Liverpool doesn't mean he's a bad player. He just wanted a new experience. But Martin Edwards will be a man in demand. And as you can see, Chelsea are definitely going to be in for him as well. And why wouldn't they be? Because if you look at Manchester United, and this is, this, this is the focal point of this video, right? I hate the Glazers. I really hate the Glazers. But in the last 10 years, it's not them that has caused where we are 
as a football club. I think Ed Woodward is more directly responsible for the downfall of Manchester United since Fergie retired than the Glazers are. Now, you might say that's a controversial thing to say, but if you take a look at this from the Times, uh, they've created a, an, alg not an algorithm. They created a formula to take a look at how spend versus points was in the Premier League last season. And according to that, Manchester United were bottom of the table for return on money spent. So if you look here on the left-hand side, oh shit, I've ruined it now. Um, if Oh no, I've ruined it. How's it go? Uh, that one there? There you go. <clears throat> well, actually, no, other way around. Bottom of the table. There we go. Wages and amortization in terms of the player cost. Like, look at United down there. 443 million. Only Chelsea and City have bigger than us. We only got 58 points. So, taking into account down here all the, um, the rank and the lead position, expected points, Manchester United down there, bottom with minus 19. Manchester United have wasted millions and millions, over a billion pounds we've wasted on poor signings under that man's watch. Hypothetically, had it been Michael Edwards who, uh, who had replaced David Gill instead of Ed Woodward at the time, my word, we would not be in this position. We would not be in this position had we brought in somebody who was a specialist in that role. And you'll know full well that's why I was so vocal and adamant that a man like Paul Mitchell would have been an incredible appointment for Manchester United to make this summer. It is the one key piece that is still missing from this new jigsaw that we are building. John Murto, look, he's the man who's ultimately responsible for everything that's happening this summer now. And he's learning on the job. And for this role, it's such... Uh, the way that transfers have transformed and changed over the years and the amount of money involved in them, the scale of them, <clears throat> the influence, the agent's influence, the player's influence, it's become such a convoluted and complicated process that it requires somebody to be full-time on transfers alone. At this moment in time, even with Andy O'Boyle down there taking off a lot of the day-to-day -day admin in Manchester United, John Murto, simply put, doesn't have the experience inside that. The, the language of transfers is very different to anything else. If you don't have experience, it's very difficult to learn. Michael Edwards is somebody who, look, you might just, you might say, oh, Sam, look, he'll overlook Manchester United because he was with Liverpool for 10 years. And maybe that is the case. But until we hear that from him, then we have to consider him available. He's left Liverpool. He decided to leave Liverpool, right? He's not sacked. Chelsea are after him. Does that mean Chelsea looking out, looking out for somebody who's shit? No, it just means they're looking out for probably somebody who's the best in class at it. And that's what we need for Eric Ten Hag, man. We, Gary Neville's words, best in class. He kept repeating and repeating that. When it comes to this position, this is not something that Manchester United can resolve by promoting from within. It's just not possible. When it comes to finding a new transfer chief, finding that missing link, that person who can really lead these, these negotiations, because this summer, this summer sorry, has shown that we're still missing that. These De Jong negotiations have gone on far too long. Why is it that we seem to have an inability to do two things at once? The De Jong situation, cool, I understand that's taken a long time, but it's not as if you're there from 8 a.m. until 6 p.m. talking about De Jong. And if that is the case, how has it taken two weeks to go from our first bid getting rejected to a second bid going in? What's the, I mean, what are you doing? How has it taken that long? We need somebody there who's got the experience and who's, He's been there, he's seen that, he's got the t-shirt, he's done it all. And if that's not, well, clearly it's not going to be, but Paul Mitchell was obviously the man that we identified, we all, he came to Old Trafford, he met Ralph Ragnick. Ralph Ragnick was supposed to be a man that helped with this, but the club got rid of him because Eric Ten Hag didn't want him in. I understood that. But we need somebody like Paul Mitchell. We need somebody like Michael Edwards. And I will, in the same way that I on this channel have repeated season after season after season, that we need a central defensive midfielder and until we sign one, we cannot possibly operate as a football club in the modern game anymore. I will say the same thing about a man like Michael Edwards or a man like Paul Mitchell. Until we get somebody in who is an experienced transfer specialist who leads that department and takes it over, then I don't think we can sustainably 
rebuild as a football club. And I'll tell you what, I'm not sure whether we'd ever, ever be able to make that appointment because John Murto has taken that role there. And whoever comes in will have to work underneath him. And that's an interesting and, well, that might be a blocker. That may well be a blocker. Even if he wanted to come to Manchester United, maybe that'll be a blocker for Michael Edwards too. Maybe he was interested in moving to Manchester United, but as soon as he heard about it, Paul Mitchell wanted to stay at Monaco. This summer has shown and repeated that we're making similar mistakes. We're still struggling. It's like we don't understand the language of the modern day transfer market properly. Or we just go in from the wrong angle every single time. We need expertise there. We're doing really wanting to do a rebuild for this man. It has to be done. It's the most significant and most important signing we could make this summer. And I wanted to do this video because I need to reiterate and bring this conversation back to the top. Talk about your De Jong's and your Antonis and uh, your Lissandro Martinez is all you want. But until we make that appointment, this club will be stuck in the wrong cycle. We need a transfer specialist guru, whoever you want to call it. We need them and we need them now.